Um, all right, this is from my second and current um, memoir, uh, Constructing a Nervous System, which was released in April. Um, I don't think I... One thing I will, I will explain. Um, there is a reference fairly early in um, to um, the human self on its, in its stone masonry kind of let's go forward mode saying go on, um, go on, go on. And those are actually um, the last words of my first memoir, Negro Land. And this is the opening, actually. Do I need these? I might. Mayhap, yes. I stood in a bright, harsh light. The stage was bare. I extended my arm, no, flung, hurled it out, pointed an accusatory finger, then turned to an unseen audience and declared, this is the woman with only one childhood. It was part of the night's dream work, and I was rattled when I woke up, for I'd been addressing myself. My tone was harsh, and my outstretched arm with its accusing finger had the force of that moment in melodrama when the villain, hitherto successful in his schemes to ruin the heroine's life, is revealed, condemned, and readied for punishment. I understood what I had to do. At the end of his stage show, Bill Bojangles Robinson would look up at the lighting booth and shout, give me a light, my color. Pause, then blackout. <laughs> when the light returned, I knew it was time to construct another nervous system. For most of my adult life, I'd felt that to become a person of complex and stirring character, a person, as I put it, of inner consequence. I must break myself into pieces, hammer, saw, chisel away at the unworthy parts, then rebuild. It was laborious, like stone masonry. And on the stone masonry model, the human self says, go on. It admires itself for saying, go on, and proceeds to go on. As I went on, I grew dissatisfied. This edifice was too fixed. I wanted it to become an apparatus of mobile parts, parts that fuse, burst, fracture, cluster, hurdle, and drift. I wanted to hear its continuous thrum, thrum, go the materials of my life, chosen, imposed, inherited, made up. I imagined it as a nervous system, but not the standard biological kind. It was an assemblage, but not, yeah, sorry, it was an assemblage. My nervous system is my structure of recombinant thoughts, memories, feelings, sensations, and words. Repeat after me, it is time to construct another nervous system. You write criticism, you write memoir. What will be your tactics, strategies, instruments for constructing this nervous system? I keep carping and fussing, rearing up against the words critic and criticism, such august, temperate words. They make me think Gertrude Stein was right, that nouns are boring because all they do is name things. And just naming names is all right when you want to call a roll, but is it good for anything else? When you're thrilled by a flying buttress, a petticoat, a sound chamber of notes and syllables, when an idea makes you feel as if the top of your head were being taken off, then abandon those two temperate prose zones and keep writing criticism. As for memoir, I keep attaching adjectives to it. Cultural memoir, temperamental memoir. What makes me so anxious? I want memoir and criticism to merge. Can they? And if so, how? Read on. <laughs> There's no escaping the stuff of memory and experience. Dramatize it, analyze it, amend it accidentally, remake it intentionally. Call it temperamental autobiography. Be a critic of your own prose past. These words, for instance. A young, 
novelist asked me, why did you choose to write criticism? I wanted to make my way to the center of American culture and find ways to decenter it, I told her. Why did you choose to write memoir, she asked. I wanted to make my way to my own American center and find language for the fractures there, I answered. These words aren't wrong, and they've worked to set the mood for readings. They're too smooth, though, too graciously incantatory, too composed to show the valiant journey, the honorable aim, the role assigned and assumed. Stand up especially straight, please. You are one of the first black women critics here. You are among the first of your race and gender to steadily publish reviews in a cluster of widely read periodicals from the 1970s into the 21st century. Writing to honor and claim a permanent place for the arts and cultures of non-white, non-males, and non-heterosexuals. Writing to savor and display your ease with them all including the arts and cultures at times of white male heterosexuals, writing to display your own gifts and skills. Is this commemoratively grand? Tonally accurate, though. Those times and those settings required touches of self-protective grandeur. You were always calculating, not always well, how to achieve, succeed as a symbol and a self. Remember, Memoir is your present negotiating with versions of a past for a future you're willing to show up in. On a stage filled with bodies, the adult orphan speaks the last lines of the family play. Exit alone. Prepare to enter a new play. As I write this, I worry that I'm about to hurl raw intimacies at new uncommitted readers. If I delay, though, I'm coddling myself and pretending it's for their benefit. Thank you. <laughs>